honesty, passion, experience. It's Timberwolves Explosion, hosted on the Paladino Live Network. And now, your host, Paladino Joey. Hello again, Timberwolves fans. Are you ready for the explosion of Timberwolves basketball? I am your host, Peldino Joey, or Joey Wygen. Timberwolves Explosion is available on all your favorite podcasting apps. Thank you for downloading and listening to the show. It is a great pleasure to be back on board once again with you today. Kind of a veil in the sky with the sun poking through. I guess that's the Wolves' chances of winning this series. The sun poking through a little bit. You never know. Could win Game 6 and maybe pull off a miracle in Game 7. Uh, somewhat of a miracle, anyway. Um, but... I don't know. Uh, odds are against it, I suppose. This has been kind of a back-and-forth series, and if momentum kind of continues to shift back and forth the way it does, I could see the Wolves winning Game 6 and not winning Game 7. That's my guess, and I did kind of figure that from the beginning of the series. It'd be a bit of a back-and-back, back. but that's just kind of how that goes. We could kind of look over the playoffs a little bit as well. Of course, we're going to talk about two games and preview one and maybe two, that kind of thing, but it's not going to be really a major preview, just previewing Game 6 and then potentially what Game 7 could be that type of situation. Uh, it was a nice game four, basically. Right now, again, the Memphis Grizzlies lead the series three games to do. It's certainly been an entertaining series, but extremely frustrating, especially when you really get that pit in your throat, that pit in your stomach, feeling the Wolves should be up three to two, at least three to two, if not maybe uh, winning the series four to one, that type of situation. But that's just kind of Minnesota sports. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. The Vikings could have, could have easily won maybe four more games last year with, like, last-second plays that could have been made, that should have been made, that easily could have been made, like a chip shot field goal, uh, fumbling when you're in field goal range in the season opener. You know, that's two games right there, the first two games of the season. You could just go on all day with last season's Minnesota Vikings. They could have won 11 games easily last year. Instead, they won 8, if not like 12 or 13. And dead bleeping serious for that one. The Wolves easily could have won this series by now. Maybe not easily, but they could have. Uh, the frustration of the whole thing is how every time the Wolves build a lead, the Memphis Grizzlies come roaring back one way or another. And... and also, a big reason for that is every time they miss a shot, they seem to find a way to get an offensive rebound. Luckily, the Wolves were getting defensive rebounds down the stretch that kind of helped save the day and prevent a another annoying, extremely frustrating comeback by the Grizzlies in game number four. 119-118, we can go to that now. That definitely spelled the Wolves' doom in game five, which the Wolves led most of the way. Not the whole way, but most of the way. When you're unable to pull down the rebound in those situations, and you get them to miss, you get a quote-unquote stop, and then you can't get the rebound, it's just, here we go again, and it just kept happening, and that's been the theme of the series, along with all the stupid fouls and mediocre defense down the stretch. Certainly doesn't help either. We'll talk about Game 4 really quick. Carl Anthony Towns, who I ripped and bashed, and, well, maybe not bashed, but I ripped and uh, showed my frustration throughout the last show, particularly with Game 3, but really Game 1, he wasn't really good either with Carl Anthony Towns. To be quite fair, he had a pretty good Game uh, 2. He had a pretty good Game 2. No, he had a really good Game 1 and a bad Game 2 and bad Game 3. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns, really good Game 1. Apologize. Uh, game 4 was similar to Game 1, except for the 6 turnovers. That wasn't the best part down the stretch. And again, that's one of the reasons why the Grizzlies kept coming back for the turnovers. And guys not rebounding the ball outside of Carl Anthony Towns earlier in the game. And uh, that's just kind of been the theme of this series, generally speaking. Uh, a lot of people will tell you, and I could agree with this, uh, that Jordan McLaughlin is, you know, if, if the Wolves didn't have him and hitting all, th all four of his three-pointers, the Wolves would not have even won game four at all. Uh, Jordan McLaughlin does have that vibe to him, that he might be one of those names you hear for many years. Like I talked about uh, Jane McDaniels, this and that. I think Jane McDaniels is going to be a bigger name long-term throughout his NBA career than Jordan McLaughlin. But I sense a little bit of Derek Fisher in, in Jordan McLaughlin. A little bit of Derek Fisher with, with better defense. Before, it's like he couldn't shoot at all. Now, all of a sudden, he's starting to develop a bit of an outside shot. And that's going to keep him in the NBA for, forever, quite frankly. He's going to play in the NBA for 10-plus years. No, no question about it. If he can hit those threes as he's able to, those spot-up threes and such. 
and be a big factor down the stretch. A lot of people would have loved to say, would love to say, they'd rather have Jordan McLaughlin in the game than D'Angelo Russell. So when it's uh, decision time about extending D'Angelo Russell in the offseason, wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people thought that, uh, you know, look to trade him instead. It could be an expiring contract for another team in the $30 million range because he does, I'm not getting any vibe that D'Angelo Russell is a $30 million player at all. Um, you could say he's got balls of solid rock, balls of ice, and this and that. I don't think he does. Uh, he does when he wants to. He does at certain points here and there. But then, and then he turns in games like this, 3 of 12, and he puts up stupid shots that help kind of, that help the opponent, in this case the Memphis Grizzlies, get back in the game. You have a small lead in the fourth quarter, and then he does stupid things that used to drive me nuts from uh, Rashad McCants. He, he has Rashad McCants syndrome, and I used to even say that about Malik Beasley, who attempted zero shots in the game in almost 12 minutes. What the hell? That's an anomaly. Zero shots in almost 12 minutes in the game. He had one turnover and one rebound. What the hell? I, I don't understand that. Malik Beasley, that's strange. He was just kind of out there, I guess, catching the ball and kind of maybe swinging it to the next guy, but maybe getting a couple hockey assists along the way, and that's about it. A couple of hockey assists. All right. Way to go, buddy. <laughs> Nas Reed kind of similar, too. Obviously, you're shrinking down your rotation, but you got to think Malik Beasley's got to be part of that nine-man rotation potentially eight-man rotation. I'd say nine, though. Nine, generally, even in the postseason, when you do shrink down things a bit. But I don't know. Uh, D'Angelo Russell, 3 of 12. And again, it's not just the 3 of 12. It's the poor timing of the shots. Again, like early in the shot clock, you're up by a small amount in the fourth quarter, and you're taking stupid-ass shots that make no sense. And he did it in game uh, number five as well. D'Angelo Russell is driving me insane, and I think a lot of Minnesota Timberwolves fans would agree with that along the way. Back to where I would like to be, Carl Anthony Towns was wonderful in this game. 8 of 17, he got to the free throw line, or attempted 17 free throws anyway, and a number of clutch threes, and he made a number of clutch threes in game number 5 as well. Carl Anthony Towns looking tons, tons better, looking much more stoic. You're still getting the foul, foul, foul bull crap, and you saw a bit more of that in game number 5 than in game number 4, but at the same time, he's been more stoic than he was before. <laughs> per se, in games number two and three, where it looked like he was just losing his mind. And, of course, the play-in game with the Los Angeles Clippers. Carl Anthony Towns looked like he was losing his mind. Obviously, the talent's there. Obviously, the skill's there. Just the mental toughness needs to be there consistently. Uh, I think Anthony Edwards has kept his mental toughness, generally speaking, throughout the series. But, you know, some rookie mistakes, some playoff rookie mistakes, or just young guy, 20-year-old mistakes. When you consider Michael Jordan was a junior in college, at the stage where uh, Anthony Edwards was. Of course, winning a national championship over Patrick Ewing and Georgetown. Oh, Patrick Ewing and Michael Jordan were like really close friends and still are over all the many, many years. But man, Patrick Ewing, there's got to be a little bit of like insane frustration down the stretch with that. Uh, Patrick Ewing and Michael Jordan over the course of about 15 years there. Oh, it's got to be heartbreaking beyond belief. But that's just how things go sometimes, unfortunately. Not all of us are, you know, not all of <laughs> Some guys get all the breaks, that kind of thing. That kind of song goes. Um, nice performance by Anthony Edwards, though, I got to say, in game number four, again, attacking the rim. Um, but there, there were instances in this game that drove me nuts, and I think some of the things the fans were saying down the stretch as well, chanting wolves in six, wolves in six, come on. You know, and obviously the wolves, it shows the wolves only won by one point because of Bain hitting another three-pointer at the buzzer to kind of make the score a little prettier, kind of. Um, and Bain drives me nuts, too. I don't like that guy either. I don't like him at all. Actually, he's becoming more and more of kind of a just a punk ass out there, to be quite frank. He's a good player, but he pisses me off. Let's just leave it at that. Um, but the chant of Wolves in Six, that rubbed me the wrong way a little bit. Really? I mean, are we the Golden State Warrior fan base now with our big mouths and showing off like we're the greatest thing ever just because we have some success finally because the Warriors sucked for like, you know, 30 years before they started winning again. Um, let's just be fair. 75 to what? Thir uh, well, that was 40 years. 75 to 15. That's 40 years. And they're all acting like jackasses about like how great they are. It's like time to grow up, people. And this Wolves and Six chant, after you gave up a 26-point lead, your team in your house, just a couple days earlier, gave up a 26-point lead to a team that you probably should be able to beat, as good as they can be. You should be able to. You should have been able to finish that off with the talent we have. Any NBA team should be able to finish off someone up by 26 
Okay? It, it just, it, that needs to be your game. It's your game. Take it. Take the win. And, and then we're chanting Wolves in six. You're going on the road to Memphis, and it's like, guys, you know, maybe you were, maybe you would have been right, but I think you would have been more lucky than you would have been right. It's not because you're great NBA minds out there saying that. I wish it was Wolves in six. You have no idea how badly I wish that. And if the Wolves overachieve and win game number five, which it turned out they probably should have, <laughs> then you got a chance to do it. But you still have to win the sixth game too to be able to say Wolves at six, because God knows Memphis would have came out came at us with everything, including the kitchen sink, as they say. So, remember the Seattle Supersonics way back in 2000, uh, 2000 my butt, 1998 were trailing three to, uh, two to one back when the series would have ended in five games. Wolves could have won that series in four. That would have been our quote-unquote game six. And Seattle beat us. Seattle just freaking beat us. And it was so disappointing. And, and then you go into Seattle and start off red hot, looking great, and then everything just completely unraveled. And there was turnovers up the Blah, 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 blah. There was a billion turnovers in that game by Garnett and Marbury. It was terrible. And it was, you know, and that's what I could have imagined happening with the Memphis Grizzlies. I don't think the Wolves would get blown out in the seventh game. I think this group is better than that group was. This group's more prepared for the postseason than that group. Yet at the same time, giving up, uh, you know, giving up 26 point leads at home and then getting cocky, saying Wolves in six, Wolves in six. That didn't make me feel good. Seriously, you know, it's like you, you almost like cursed yourself by saying that. Because maybe it could have been Wolves in six. Maybe it could have. You win game five and you come back and finish them up in game six at home. Would have been a beautiful thing. Would have been awesome. But getting all cocky and full of yourself after, you know, blowing a massive lead in game number three. Just seriously, come on, guys. <laughs> come on, guys. Not cool. Not cool at all. Um... And then, again, game number five happened. The Wolves led most of the way. They didn't lead at the beginning. Memphis, actually, it was out playing the Wolves pretty good at the beginning of the game, uh, the very early stages of the first quarter. And then it gradually got better. The Wolves started building a lead, and they were maintaining 10-point-ish type leads most of the game, and it was a lot of fun. But you just knew there was going to be something along the way where Memphis would start coming back again. And, of course, it eventually came. It took a long, long, long time. I think, oh, my God, we actually might finish this sucker off. And then, of course, there's the collapse. And you look at the win probability, and it's like, does it have to? Did it have to happen this way? It was so fast. It was just so sudden. Next thing you know, you see Wolves up 92-81, you know, 92-83, blah, 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 94-83, kind of a bit back and forth. And then it just, you know, and then 96-88, you're kind of maintaining at least an eight, nine-point lead, Eight, nine points, eight, nine, nine, eight, seven, and then kaboosh, and then down it went right when it got to right around 100. Uh, obviously, there were the turnovers, there were the offensive rebounds, and John Morant finally woke up, and then thinks now he thinks he's Michael Jordan out there. But uh, honest to God, though, his game, his style of game, but obviously a more athletic version, more athletic version, longer arms, he can do more, like obviously dunking and such compared to a certain guy. I compare John Morant to a guy I don't like very much, Allen Iverson. I know everybody that's a cult following. Allen Iverson is the greatest thing ever. How can you not like Allen Iverson? Killer crossover, blah, blah, blah. Because he was an ass. Because he was an ass, <laughs> okay? He was selfish. He was selfish. There's a reason why he never won a championship. Very selfish. Uh, John Morant, I don't think he's as selfish. He's, he's sure becoming a bigger, bigger. And he's becoming less and less likable, though. I'll, I'll give you that much. He is one... Arrogant mf or he he really is, and he drives me nuts. Um, obviously, again, and players of his stature, where clearly it's like all you know, he's an all star, perennial all star type, possibly Hall of Famer if he stays healthy. Blah blah blah, because it's too early to just say Hall of Famer, you know, Hall of Famer if he stays healthy. Um, I don't know, kind of rub, he kind of was rubbing it in our face after the game, and I I know I honestly feel both. Teams have players that need to grow up. Honestly, need to grow up about all this, you know, shushing the crowd and looking. Oh, where did the ball go? You know, when when uh, Russell uh, Russell Westbrook shot an air ball and a three pointer. Where'd the ball go, Russ? Where'd it go? You know, stuff like that. That kind of rub anybody the wrong way. So it, seriously, I think both. I think I think the NBA has a virus right now, where everybody's trying to show each other up. And I don't know. I wish it would stop. Quite frankly, it's childish. Um, it also didn't help that the Timberwolves had 22 Mickey frickin' turnovers. I know, I gotta stop with my 
strange language here. Um, nine offensive rebounds by Brendan Clark as well. That was just killer off the bench. Nine offensive rebounds. Get the freaking rebound. Especially down the stretch. You're getting the stops. It's a close game. You're up by three. You're down by three. You're up by two. You're down by two. And you don't get the bleeping rebound. I mean, you're going to lose the game when that happens. You are going to lose the game. Nine off. I mean, how does this even happen? Nine offensive rebounds. Get the rebound, for the love of God. Uh, that's what the Wolves need to focus on, and I would love to have, even though he's a slower guy, <laughs> obviously, I would love to see some action from Greg Monroe on the fo- uh, on the frickin' court. I understand it's a smaller lineup, and it's the playoffs, and blah, 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 and Greg Monroe's almost like an insurance policy at this point. But even guys like a Jalen Noel, why can't he get some minutes? Why can't Jalen Noel get some minutes? It would have helped, especially when DeAndre Russell's sucking big time, like he's been doing way too much. And not only has he not been playing well, but he's been taking stupid, stupid shots. Stupid shots. Low IQ shots. Low IQ plays by a guy who's, you know, he's been in the league a while now. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns has been in the league a while now. Seventh season. Seventh. That's a that's not that's not nothing, folks. That's a that's a big number, um, guys. Get the rebound. You know, obviously you got to get the rebound, but smart shot attempts by D'Angelo Russell would be nice. But I kind of think D'Angelo Russell is what he is, and he ain't worth thirty million dollars. He ain't worth thirty three, thirty. He ain't worth twenty five, frankly. But I don't know. Not if he's gonna play like that. He can be wonderful with those clutch plays like he was at the Clipper game. It was awesome. But at the end of the day, that was just one freaking game. I mean, you don't win a championship in one game in the playoffs, a one play-in game. You're just squeezing into the playoffs. I'm glad he did it. I'm glad he played well down the stretch, but we need to see more of it. Carl Anthony Towns did show more of it once again in this game. Clutch three after clutch three. Taking the ball to the rim. Making all, that's right, all of his free throws. Not making most of them. Made all of them. Nine of nine. Awesome. Five of seven. Again, five of seven from downtown. Those clutch threes. You're seeing the Carl Anthony Towns we saw all year. And there you go. There you go. The other side you saw all year, too, that was the five personal fouls. And, you know, the seven turnovers is pretty disgusting and annoying. But two blocks, th- three steals, that always helps. Anthony Edwards diving for the ball. Uh, you know, that's Corey Brewer's syndrome right there. Where Corey Brewer, oh, he's a great defender. He got three steals. And look how fast he can run down the court. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. I like players like that. I like guys that get steals and get slashed to the basket, but not when, not when you're, <laughs> not when you're like, yeah, missing. Not when you're gambling at the wrong place in the wrong time, and you end up losing the game, and you get showed up by a little punk who is a really good player, but he's a little punk the way he was acting in the game, John Morant. Um, oh God, that was really really frustrating. Um, taking your chance on that. And, and even Anthony Edwards had five fouls. And he didn't shoot particularly well, but he had an insanely clutch corner three. You all saw it. Everybody saw it. I saw it. You saw it. And it felt like a million bucks. Thinking maybe, just maybe, we can pull this off. Get the big stop, go into OT, and finish this off. Even though my, I had my doubts because the momentum was on a certain player's side. And, or a certain team's side. And it wasn't ours. Because you just you know blew like an 11, 11 or 9 point lead here down the stretch in the fourth quarter. So I wasn't feeling all that great about it, but you never know. It's happened more than once this year where the Wolves would blow a lead, go to OT, and then surprise us. So maybe you do get the job done. Maybe you do uh, survive. Jordan McLaughlin, doggone it. All he did was all he did was make one one layup in the game. Did get four assists. We appreciated that he did not turn the ball over. We also appreciate that. So that's where he's a nice replacement for Tyus Jones. Matthias was fantastic at assist to turnover ratio, like historic levels, actually. And then McLaughlin comes in, and he's kind of like historic from <laughs> historic in the old uh, assist to turnover ratio. But outside of Torian Prince's 10 points on mediocre shooting, 3 of 8, missing all 3 of his uh, 3 point attempts, getting to the line and making all those, we're happy there. I, I am happy about that. You need more from your bench than you got in this game, honestly. Okay, and I think it was actually even worse in the last game, but I mean, you know, guys like Jaden McDaniels, only three, Jordan McLaughlin, only two. I mean, I'm not really bashing the bench. It wasn't that bad, so I probably should shut my big yap on this one. You need better rebounding, no doubt about it. Nas Reed finally showed up a bit and won up with nine points, and Malik Beasley, at least he attempted a shot. My goodness, I, I, I never thought I'd see the day Malik Beasley plays at least a quarter's worth of a game and doesn't even attempt a shot. 
So he attempted eight and was three of eight. So kind of also mediocre-ish, you know, mediocre-ish shooting in the game. Below 50% and blah, blah, blah. And I know it's below, but it's like in the upper 30s. So that's not anything to write home about at all, quite frankly. Beverly's ton, Beverly getting fouled out in the game and five turnovers. It's just a big mess. He can be clutch. He can be wonderful. He's got leadership skills. He's able to boost guys' confidence, like Carl Anthony Towns, get him to focus. But then there's that other side where he's just, I don't know. He's he's as, he's as mental as, as the younger guys, you know, when it comes to, like, mentally this, mentally that. Just not not where he needs to be. Let's just leave it at that. Um, it, it, it drove me nuts. <sighs> Offensive rebounds. How many did the Wolves get in the whole game? Six. Brandon Clark, how many did he get? Nine. You see what I'm saying, though? You see what I'm saying? Those second chance points. 18 frickin' offensive rebounds by the Memphis frickin' Grizzlies. The Wolves, as a team, had six. See, it's stuff like that. I mean, a thousand percent chance the Wolves lost because of that number right there. You just look at that number. You lose by, what, how many did we lose by? A point, right? No, we lost by two. What am I talking about? Yeah, um, with the layup. And... A thousand percent chance that's, you know, that's that one little stat that kind of finished us off in the game. Now, as much as I call, I'm call, i calling him names and pissed off at him, calling him a dick on Twitter and all that, with how he kind of showed us up, oh, he had a, he had a, a dunk to remember, Bo, though, let me tell you. I mean, just, I've, I've never seen anything like it. Talk about posterizing. It was insane on uh, Jared Vanderbilt. Oh, uh, Malik Beasley, pardon me. It was an unbelievable dunk by John Morant. <laughs> it ended up leaving us all kind of blown to, blown away. Um, that was, unfortunately, actually in the last game, number three. But that was one of the dunks that will be remembered forever. Uh, you'll, that's going to be on posters. It's going to be on every highlight the Memphis Grizzlies have for season tickets or whatever the heck. Any, any John Morant highlight there ever is, it was... Uh, insane, where he cocked back and just kind of flew, I don't know, about, it looked like about 8 to 10 feet away from the rim, and just, you know, it, it was amazing. Like, you'll never see, in a million years, you would never see Allen Iverson do that. So, I think John Morant will have a better career than Allen Iverson, as long as he stays healthy, this and that, but uh, that was the complaint with Allen Iverson as well, that little body and attacking the rim and on the floor every 10 seconds, you know, as he gets fouled or hit or whatever the heck it is. Um, that was the complaint with Allen Iverson, just like it is with John Moran now. Uh, will he be able to stay healthy? We'll see. Because that certainly was an undoing for uh, John, uh, for, for Allen Iverson later in his career. He ended up shortening his career. Now he looks like he's 65 years old. <laughs> certainly not a young guy. He's closer to 50 than he is 40, which is really sad and crazy to imagine. Just like some of us. I mean, of course, I'm closer to 40 still, thankfully. 40, turning 43 this year, so working on it, unfortunately. Um, hell of a, hell of a, hell of a game by John Morant, and of course, again, he had a highlight play of highlight plays in game number three at the very least. Um, <laughs> it was, it's a very, it was a very entertaining couple of games, but insanely frustrating. How you just about lost game number four, and then this one, you just, you, you gave up down the stretch. Another double digit uh, situation here. First time in NBA history, and I'll bring it up on Twitter again in the fan interaction segment, which is coming right up here, because this is just going to be two segments, of course. Off, you know, it's not an off-season show. It's a post-season and off-season shows generally have two, two segments because the, the review preview thing is a heck of a lot shorter than it is during the regular season. So that way you just kind of combine it together. Why have a separate preview section other than maybe previewing the, the rest of the post-season? Which, well, I kind of, I'm kind of sticking to my guns with most of that. Um, yeah, I'm sticking to my guns with most of that, other than having Utah beat Dallas, stuff like that. Uh, but with this, the stat I was trying to get to, I deeply apologize. I'm like, I'm blanking here. Like, what was I going to say? The first time in NBA history, in a single series anyway, that a team has come back and won twice when trailing by 10 or more points heading into the fourth quarter. Memphis Grizzlies, Timberwolves, 2022. Here we go. God. Oh, what? Come on. Come on, man. Come on. We made history. <laughs> Isn't that great? We made history. The wrong kind of history, but we made history. It's great. Yep, so I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be a jerk. It's just an unfortunate, 
frustrating historical stat that we get to be a part of, which it would be nice if after all that we somehow find a way to win the series. Now, luckily that could still happen. Now, that would be a wonderful story if that were to take place. And, uh, well, praying to God that that takes place. Wolves pods only. Pre Pre-gaming begins now. Wolves pods, huh? Hopefully, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it, Benzo, the last week. And the new one is coming out, obviously. So it looks like you sent this tweet one hour ago. Not to me, just out to the public. Uh, hopefully you're going to enjoy this Wolves pod coming up because I think you know it's coming on Friday. This will very, 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 very likely be the last regularly scheduled uh, Friday episode. It's going to be more randomly scheduled now because the spring cleanup uh, season is here. It's There's no doubt it's here. So it's going to be the whole rainy days and Sundays type of thing when it comes to releasing this show. Rainy days and Sundays or Saturdays or what the, whatever the heck. So I'll, but I'll do my best to throw out episodes of the show, keeping up with the postseason, with the Wolves postseason and potentially the uh, NBA postseason, and then eventually leading to State of the Timberwolves and all that, which will have a draft preview and free agency kind of conversation, but mostly draft preview, yes, free agency as well, and the direction of the Wolves going forward because one way or another, even if you win an NBA championship, there's going to be changes to the roster. There's going to be moves they're going to make, and of course there's going to be a draft, and we're going to be in it this time, which is nice. So there'll be all of that. Uh, as for previewing, I do believe the Timberwolves do win game number six. Just get more, just get offensive rebounds, and I do believe the offensive rebounds are kind of the undoing here, and the turnovers. And I don't know. If the Timberwolves are going to overcome all of this, they're going to have to really face this team and make the adjustments necessary to prevent a to a prevent the offensive rebounds, but to take the right shots at the right time, which Carl Anthony Towns did do in both games. Carl, you know what? Congra- thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, I'm not going to necessarily. I'm going to stick with the frustrations that I had in the last show. I wasn't blindly throwing out frustrations because I hate Carl Anthony Towns, or I hate basketball, or I hate the Timberwolves, or I hate Timberwolves fans. No, that was just bad. It was just bad, and you have to call it out. You have to call it out, call it as you see it, if you're going to be an honest uh, host of a show and not just a fanboy, which I, I'm not a fanboy anymore. I stopped being one in 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000 right around then when I was like, it's time to make changes for this front office and coaching staff. It's time to change the leadership of this whole organization, to be quite fair which is what I was saying way back then and got torn to pieces on, on Twitter. Uh, excuse me, on Twitter, on ESPN message boards for the Timberwolves. Torn to pieces for years for that kind of talk. But whatever, I'm sticking to my guns on all of it. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns, wonderful performance in both games. You are the Lone Wolf Award winner for this episode. Johnny Flynn Memorial, it's you, D'Angelo Russell. Mr. Mister. I think I'm Sam Cassell. Mr. I think I'm Kobe Bryant. I wish you were. I really wish you were. I wish you were everything you think you are. But what I'm seeing is you're absolutely not that guy. And damn it anyway. Because I wanted D'Angelo Russell on this team so bad. I thought there was something very magical there. But there was always that other side. There's a reason why he didn't do well with the Los Angeles Lakers. He just wasn't that great with them. That's all. <laughs> Had some wonderful moments with Brooklyn, but it was short-lived. So... We'll have to wait and see what happens with D'Angelo Russell. Go out and kick some butt just like Carl Anthony Towns did, huh? Go out and be clutch in Game 6 and Game 7. And, well, I'll talk nicely about you, but I'm still sticking to my guns with how crappy you've been four out of five games in the series. Or maybe all five, <laughs> with that said. So, again, Timberwolves will win Game number 6. What kind of final score are we looking at? Might even go to OT. I kind of think it's going to be something along the likes of 120 to 115. Carl Anthony Towns with 30. Anthony Edwards with 35. Anthony Edwards is going to show up to play in this elimination game. 35 for Anthony Edwards. Carl gets 30. D'Angelo Russell, I have no idea. Just please. Maybe it'll be D'Angelo Russell with 33. But uh, I do believe you're going to see something magical and beautiful from Anthony Edwards, possibly in back-to-back games here. I unfortunately do believe the Memphis Grizzlies would finish the Wolves off in the seventh game. That's just my belief. I hope I'm way off. I hope I'm wrong. I hope the Wolves just go out and get it done and win like 121 to 120 or 133 to 130 in overtime, something like that. But I have a feeling it's going to be on the other side. Something like, again, like 125 to 118, something like that. Grizzlies and seven. That's my belief. 
But again, if you think I'm hoping for that, you're crazy. I want the Wolves to kick this team's butt and kick them into kingdom come. Because there's, you know, when you play a series, once you get to the fourth, fifth game in a series, you start to really dislike players on the other team. Josh Morant, I don't like that guy right now. Bain, I want to punch him in the face. Brandon Clark, I want to kick him in the balls. You know, I mean, you could just go on all day. <laughs> I know, I sound kind of silly. But that's how you feel. You get sick of them. You, you get sick and tired of them. Uh, you know, Tyus Jones, screw you. You know, <laughs> screw you. Come, you know, come back, right? No, I'm kidding. But uh, that's how I feel. With that said, let's hear how you feel on in the Fan Interaction segment coming up. Our Tim Rules Explosion, a little fan interaction conversation. Of course, let's get to the Vigit app and uh, Crypto.com first. V-I-G-I-T, it's two separate words. It is an app on Apple and Android devices where you can do fantasy betting, basically. It's not real money wagering, it's fantasy betting. Social media for sports betters, you can post about your mix, see what others are saying about games. Vigit Betting League is a month-long betting competition to see what the uh, to see who the best sports better is over the course of a month. Free-to-play sportsbook, bet-free coins, win real prizes. Betting stats, there's great information available on the Vigit Lightline movement where the public is betting. And the information of who referred you is Paladino Live. That'll be in the show description. It is a one-word thing. Crypto.com, cryptocurrencies, of course, Android and Apple devices. Fun to trade like Shiba Inu, Doge Elon, Dogecoin, blah, 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 blah. But I enjoy doing it very much. And it's a lot of fun actually to trade cryptocurrency and the feeds are extremely cheap and of course also you can trade anytime anywhere as long as you're online basically you don't have to worry about things being shut down this and that so it's a lot of fun like say the stock market closes at uh, you know like 3 30 every day at central time so there's never any guarantee of anybody winning or losing when it comes to cryptocurrency or the stock market or real estate or, or commodities so just remember all of that no guarantee either way of winning or losing so don't think too hard one way or the other there's a link in the show description click on that and when you do and you start your account they'll put $25 in there for you and it'll also help this show so hopefully you can do that that would be fantastic crypto.com it's an app on Android and Apple devices of course let's get to fan interaction if humanly possible at T Wolves EX at T Wolves EX hopefully Elon Musk can uh, <laughs> hopefully Elon Musk can um, uh, open up the, uh, can like bring back Wolves Explosion, but I kind of like this one. It's just that it's, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, it only got like a small amount of followers. All the other followers never came back, but at least they got the real followers, right? You guys are the real ones. Now there's maybe for God or aren't paying attention or they're just being lazy and slow about it. It's, it is what it is, isn't it? Let's see, what am I looking at here? I'm trying to find where the last show is. Ugh, now I'm clicking on the wrong thing. Yeah, Jordan McLaughlin. Love what he does out there. Okay, finally. I apologize. I thought I had this set up, and of course I didn't. Of course not. What did I tweet out that Ben... Oh, yeah. The the, 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 the Charles Barkley face. That was last week's show, though. Um, I'm saying episode 335, epic performance, epic collapse. Benzo out of the Bronx. Nick, Nick Timas out of Australia. Levi Brown out of New Zealand and Vince Germano out of New Zealand all retweeted the most recent show. Thank you guys so, so very much. I was saying too many stupid ass turnovers over and over and over and over. It'll be our undoing. Yeah, and that's what's driving me crazy. Too many. That was during game number four. At the time, I was saying, really, Pat Beverly, you missed them both. You asked. You have those free throws down the stretch. And yeah, Patrick Beverly frustrated the crap out of me. He would have been the other guy, possibly, to get the uh, Johnny Foot Memorial. Uh, John Maxson. No relation to John Paxson. Yep, clearly he's, clearly he's uh, local here in Minnesota, says. Aunt Bill Bond to the rescue. And yes, thank God. Big, big, great job by Anthony Edwards there. I was saying, yep, thankfully. Yes, we appreciate the Bill Bond. Levi Brown, New Zealand, said, relieved. Cat made those last two free throws. Otherwise, it would have been OT. 
after that pain three at the end. Yeah, that was game number four, which was incredibly close, incredibly frustrating. I was saying, honest to God, I, I officially cannot stand Bain or Brooks. <sighs> yep, and then Levi said, Brooks always had that effect on me. Always seemed to make difficult shots against us. Yeah, and that's a guy I didn't even rant about either. Yeah, he was another one who was making a lot of those big threes, and it was extremely frustrating. Levi continues, New Zealand again, says, great game by McLaughlin. That was the all four three-pointers there. We needed every one of his points, and he was fantastic. 16 points. He was absolutely wonderful. Jordan McLaughlin, hopefully he can do that more and more. And I was saying, yeah. What was he saying? Yep, and, uh, and I was saying, yep, you and me both. I don't know. What the heck am I saying now? Okay, I missed. Uh, I was saying I can't stand Bain or Brooks. And when Levi said he was relieved that Cad made both those free throws, would have been a three. And I said, yep, and we both know what would have happened. It was just a matter of time. Yep, but the way the Memphis Grizzlies kept crawling in there, it was crazy. It was crazy how they kept crawling closer and closer. What was I saying drives me nuts? Okay, I think it was in the, the whole, yeah, Brooks. Yep, I was saying he drives me nuts. No matter what the situation is, it seems like it goes in. Yeah, ugh. Oh. And I was saying, we are beyond lucky. My God, how many opportunities did we have to put this team away? Thank God they missed so many threes. And I was saying, we won by the skin of our teeth. I refuse to get cocky about anything we do right now. Yeah, I mean, seriously now. I refuse to get cocky about anything. A couple of responses, and I'm not seeing them. Come on. Okay, Levi was saying the great game by and then Yep, okay, so that was actually all responses to what I was saying there. And then Ben Simmons, who just will not play. He just won't play. He just won't play. And he made, he's another one, the whole $33 million thing. Another $33 million piece of crap. You know, dare I say. Tilly Brown is saying, imagine if we traded for Simmons. Yeah, and we'd be beyond frustrated. He'd be not playing. He'd just be sitting there looking fancy and being happy for himself that he has $33 million every year. Uh, it's really goofy. Really goofy. So we'll try to continue here. Sorry. One distraction after another. I think mostly... Oh, yep. I was going off on... Uh, I was saying Desmond Bain is a punk. Can't stand him anymore. That was in game number five. You know, he was, I was saying, yeah, he shoved Chris Finch. That was bull crap. Nick was saying I was going to look that up later. Yep. Benzo was saying, okay. So, I was saying, well, I hate the Memphis Grizzlies now. Benzo said, yeah, this one was tough for sure, but after watching those calls at the end, I'm sold on it going seven. The ratings in the series have been the highest in the playoffs so far. Yeah, and it's the only remaining series, believe it or not, which is really crazy. Um, Tanae Brown says, need to dominate game six and take a heap of confidence into game seven. The Memphis crowd can be taken out of the game pretty easily. That is true. That is pretty true. Levi Brown said, crazy how we had the opportunity to have this series won already. Very true. That's exactly how I feel. It's absolutely true. Um, something I said where I was going off and cursing my head off here. Because I went nuts. You know, I was, I was watching the replay and all that. And I was saying, um, who was I responding? Oh, yeah, I was responding to Howl Ball. How, howling at the hoop. They say, which one hurts, game three or game five? Which one hurts worse? I was saying five. How, how do you just let that go? And the way they rubbed it in our face made me want to smash the TV screen. Yeah, but I mean, really, either one of them, it's ridiculous. Because game three, we just let go as well. <sighs> Man, I was really pissed. Um, I was like, man, do I hope the Wolves, the Wolves smash this team in the kingdom come the next two games. But of course, it won't happen that way. BS. Regardless, bleep the bleeping Grizzlies and bleep their fans too. Because I was, yeah, I was losing my mind there. Yep. And today, and Levi responded to that with, uh, yep, where they were saying, uh, it's crazy how we should have won, basically. Mac, uh, John Magden said, just BSing around. Yeah, I said, Mike Conley, what the hell was that? Yeah, just BSing around is that. They kind of choked that away. It was pretty silly. It was pretty damn silly. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and then Boan breaks the wide open three. Yeah, he was wide open. 
Ah, oh, that was too bad. Yep, yeah, that was really a damn shame. That was really a shame. Uh, I also interacted briefly with John Creaso. I don't know where it went. I'm not seeing it. There it is. Yeah, John Creaso was saying. And it's funny watching John Moran act like he's MJ when he's been mostly absent. And I was saying, hey, man, what a classless dick. Seriously, I've lost respect for him big time. But the way he was acting yeah, after the game, I was not happy with uh, John Moran. I've obviously cooled down since the time. But, um, yeah, I was extremely, extremely frustrated with how things went down the stretch. So that should wrap up the Twitter section. Let's get to Facebook here very briefly. Facebook.com forward slash Timberwolves Explosion. Let's get to what uh, Wayne Hunt had to say. This is a, a while back, but during the uh, during the difference uh, during the difference of the two shows here, Wayne Hunt says Timberwolves really need to start chasing Bain off the three point line. He's too efficient to leave open. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Again, Wayne Hunt, Memphis Grizzlies fan from Sydney, Australia. Of course, him and Stu Benson are from Sydney, Australia. Vin Rock, Vince Germano is from Melbourne, Australia. They do the courtside podcast. Highly recommended. I'm looking forward to what those guys have to say about this series. Do do definitely recommend that one so we'll try to continue here and yep obviously wonderful show highly recommended on all the same apps like all the way like the iHeartRadio, even all those awesome uh, wayne hunt says a solid win for the wolves you gotta love playoff basketball this is after game four of course hoping some home cooking will get the grizz back on track i guess it did <laughs> side note what's with all the protesters save your trauma for your mama take that noise somewhere else losers I would like to say that about a lot of things, but of course, then, yeah, I would. I would like to say that about a lot of things, but you probably wouldn't agree with me on some of them. <laughs> I'll leave that where that is, but I would say the exact same line, though. Save your drama for your mama. Take that noise somewhere else. Losers. Yes, um, there's a lot of protesting that I'm sick of over the years. I think protesting in general, it's like enough, enough already. It's tiring. Um, seriously, at least lately, lately, it's getting to be way too much. Ah, uh, see all comments, and then he responded. Uh, yeah, he like added to his comments saying, "A much better performance from Towns. That's what you want from a franchise guy." Glad to see he listened to the last episode and and took it straight at JJJ and caused him headaches. Man, I gotta say the officiating has been terrible both ways. Can we find officials? And he was laughing. Yeah, I mean it's been it's definitely been frustrating. It's definitely been frustrating. Yeah, to say the least. With that said, again, hoping the Timberwolves are able to recover and get to the Game 7. I do believe the Wolves will get to the 7th game. After that, we'll have to wait and see how things go. Because bottom line, obviously, I mean, just this is, a, this is a results league. It's a results world when it comes to sports. you got to get the win, and hopefully the Wolves can get it done down the stretch. I'm still picking Memphis, unfortunately. I will check up uh, kind of updated predictions, possibly, on the postseason no, I don't think there's a whole lot. I still think Phoenix and Boston get to the final. That's my belief. Unfortunately, Golden State or Memphis. I have Golden State or Memphis in the uh, conference final. I think Golden State's probably going to be there, but I'm hoping and praying that Phoenix is able to get the job done because I want nothing to do with the Golden State Warriors. <clears throat> Can't stand them, obviously. I do think Boston beats Milwaukee, but we'll see. Maybe Milwaukee's still got it in them, and Philly does get past the Miami Heat honest to God. So, that's that. Uh, wishing all of you a nice couple of days here. I'll be back to review the series, because next time I do this, this uh, <laughs> next time I do this show, the series will be over. Hopefully we're talking about playing the Warriors, even though I'm not looking forward to the thought of playing the Warriors or the Phoenix Suns in the future, but uh, we'll have to wait and see how things go. From there, obviously it would be the Warriors next, but I mean, like, Suns somehow, if we miraculously beat the Warriors, which would be the coolest thing ever. Uh, but it's a tough road. It's a very, very tough road to get to the NBA Finals unless you're one of those top-seeded teams and, you know, you've, you've done it before, that kind of thing. Wolves hadn't done it before when we were a number one seed and we didn't make it. The frickin' Lakers beat us and Sam, because Sam Cassell's back went out. Thank you very much. With that said, again, wishing you a nice couple of days. Hopefully the Wolves can pull this off and we can be talking about second-round basketball, but either way, we will be talking about second- and third-round and basketball into the NBA Finals in the next coming weeks here. With that said, take care and go Timberwolves.